The Charlie Andaveras neck injury at UFC Fight Night, Hall versus Silva. He almost broke his damn neck. Bro, what are you talking about, man? Today I'm talking about an event that involved UFC newcomer Charlie Ontiveros in his UFC debut. Although a seasoned fighter, Ontiveros was making his debut appearance in the UFC on Halloween night in a welterweight fight against Kevin Holland at UFC Fight Night Hall vs. Silva. Unfortunately for Ontiveros, the fight did not go the way that he had hoped. He lost the fight and left the ring with an undisclosed injury. He was taken from the ring by the medical first responders and transported to a nearby hospital for medical assessment. In this video, I'm gonna look more closely into what happened during this match, the mechanism that caused his injury, what the injury might be that occurred, and how the American bad boy might be treated. Ladies and gentlemen, can I please have your attention? Hey everybody, Dr. Chris, orthopedic surgeon and sports medicine physician. If you want to learn who I am and why you should subscribe to this channel, then stick around to the end of the video. Otherwise, let's get right to it. Charlie Ontiveros is a 29-year-old professional MMA fighter who has fought for several years with the Bellator organization. He was slated to fight UFC veteran Kevin Holland on the main card of the UFC Fight Night Hall vs. Silva event at the Apex Center in Las Vegas. It was his first fight in the UFC, and he was hoping to extend his 11-6 record to 12-6 but he had taken this fight on short notice, so the expectations for success were low. During the first round, Ontiveros attempted an axe kick and exchanged some blows with Holland before Holland took the fight to the ground. Holland dominated Ontiveros on the ground before Ontiveros was able to get back to his feet, but that did not last for long as Holland quickly threw Ontiveros back to the canvas at two minutes and 39 seconds of the first round. Ontiveros landed awkwardly on his left side, striking the canvas with the left side of his neck and his left shoulder. He was pinned on the canvas for a short time before the fight was stopped by the referee. It was not initially clear why the fight had stopped. It didn't appear that Ontiveros had tapped and he had not appeared to have lost consciousness. It appeared that he was talking after the fight was ended, but he did not get up from the canvas. After the fight ended, he remained on the canvas during the announcement of the winner and he was attended by the first responders. He was eventually taken from the octagon on a stretcher. He was taken by ambulance to the hospital for further assessment. So, at what point did the injury occur? Ontiveros did not appear to be injured before he was dragged to the ground by Holland. However, once on the ground, it did appear that Ontiveros was unable to do anything before the fight was stopped. So it appears that the injury occurred as he was thrown to the ground, or when he impacted the canvas. If we look at the video replay, you can see that Ontiveros' left arm was trapped as he was thrown. As a result, he fell to the canvas, landing on his left shoulder and on the left side of his head. Looking specifically at his neck, we can see that his neck is slightly flexed when he lands on the canvas. When the side of his head strikes the ground, his neck is forced into forward flexion and lateral side bending. In addition, with his left arm trapped by Holland's grip, he lands directly onto his left shoulder. The position of his head, neck, and shoulder on contact with the ground could result in injury to any one of these structures. While not apparent to the observers, the announcer stated that Ontiveros was complaining to the referee about pain in his neck. He had verbally submitted to Holland. Given the manner in which he had struck the ground, it would appear that he suffered some sort of flexion injury to his neck. So, what type of injury may have occurred from this fall that would leave Ontiveros unable to continue? Immediately after the fight was stopped, it appeared that Ontiveros was able to move his extremities, although he was cautioned by the referee to remain still until attended to by medical personnel. It was also reported by the ringside announcer that he had retained normal sensation in all of his fingers and toes. So, whatever injury had occurred, this would imply that the neural pathways down to his fingers and toes, in other words, his spinal cord and his nerve roots to his extremities, were intact. Since the neck was flexed forward on impact, we can anticipate that he suffered some type of flexion injury to his cervical spine. However, because the impact occurred on the left side of his head and neck, it is likely that lateral bending also contributed to his injury. There are a number of injuries that are possible with this combination of forces. Flexion injuries of the cervical spine basically include compression injuries to the front of the cervical spine, distraction injuries to the rear of the cervical spine, combined compression and distraction injuries, and injuries that involve the displacement of one spinal segment on its neighbor. 
Basically, this means that the spinal cord can be crushed in the front, pulled apart in the rear, or one segment of the column can be rotated or translated away from another. Injury can occur to the soft tissues of the column, such as the ligaments, muscles, spinal cord, or the nerve roots, the bones of the column, such as the vertebrae, or both. In Onoveros' case, the impact caused forward flexion combined with lateral bending. Structural injuries from this combination of movements, if present, could include an unstable wedge fracture, a unilateral facet dislocation, or an anterior subluxation. Physical examination and radiographic imaging will allow physicians to determine what structures, if any, are damaged and exactly what injuries have occurred. Physicians will use x-ray radiographs and computed tomography to assess the bones and their positions relative to one another. Magnetic resonance imaging will reveal the presence of any injuries to the ligaments, muscles, cervical discs, or neural elements. Obviously, the treatment that is rendered will depend on the injury pattern identified by physical examination and imaging studies. Then, what are the treatment options that are available for injuries of the cervical spine? The treatment options available for the cervical spine are based on the retained stability of the cervical spine after injury. Stability of the spine is based on Denis three column model of spinal stability, where the spinal column is divided into three equal columns. Stability of the spine is lost when two adjacent columns are injured. Injuries where only one column is injured may be considered stable and can be treated with only temporary immobilization with external bracing. This may include a rigid collar or a cervical thoracal lumbar orthosis. Injuries that involve two or more adjacent columns will require surgical stabilization of either the anterior or the posterior column. In addition, any compression of neurologic elements as evidenced by loss of sensation, motor function or reflexes in the upper or lower extremities would additionally require a decompression procedure where the structures causing the pressure on the spinal cord or nerve roots are removed under direct visualization. On November 1st, 2020, Damon Martin of MMA Fighting reported that Dana White had confirmed that Ontiveros had not suffered any serious injury after being assessed at a Las Vegas hospital. X-rays, CT scans, and MRI imaging did not reveal any significant injuries. After some truly terrifying moments in the ring, Ontiveros was walking away with only a muscular strain of his cervical muscles. White also added that when Ontiveros was slammed to the canvas, he had felt a pop in his neck and so had verbally tapped. Consequently, the UFC elected to take every precaution to avoid worsening any potential injury that may have occurred. So although he will likely be sore for a few days, it looks like the American bad boy, Charlie Ontiveros, will live to fight another day. It was certainly not the UFC debut that he was looking for, but one that he will never forget. Now, if you are here because you recently subscribed to my channel, then thank you for becoming a part of the intern army. Now, 60,000 supportive members strong. Hopefully, we can make it to 70,000 by the end of 2020. Welcome to my channel where I explain orthopedic injuries and sports medicine in a way that's easy to understand for everybody. If you are interested in sports injuries and how they happen, then yo, I got you. So subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you don't miss any of my content. And be sure to tag a student who is interested in medical topics, because this might help them too. Follow me on Instagram or Twitter for medical stories and content, TikTok Thanks for info for on medical cool. education, and on my other YouTube channels for my podcast or for workouts and training tips. Thanks for watching. And as always, that's been a word from Dr. Chris, not your everyday ortho. Just a flesh wound.